Hello friends, this video on Kingdom Planty part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. About reproduction, they can also reproduce both asexually as well as sexually. So if I talk about asexual reproduction, again they can reproduce by fragmentation as well as spore formation. So these are the two ways by which the bryophytes can reproduce asexually. Now we have already spoken about fragmentation and spore formation. In fragmentation what happens? The organism div gets divided into fragments on maturity and each fragment then gives rise to a new organism. In spore formation, some spores are released by the uh, reproductive part of the uh, plant and then those spores germinate to form new plants. So now let us look at the important aspect that is the sexual reproduction. How sexual reproduction take place in bryophytes. Now as I mentioned before also that in bryophytes we neither have flowers nor seeds. So no flowers, no seeds. So from where are the gametes produced? Because for sexual reproduction we need the sex cells that is the gametes. Now there is a structure which produces gametes and that is known as gametophyte. Gameto is related to gametes and phyte means plants. So the plants which produce gametes are known as gametophyte. So there is a structure, there is a part which is known as gametophyte and they produce the gametes. So what is the male gamete? The male gamete is known as antherozoid and the female gamete is known as the egg. So talking about the male gamete, male gamete is biflagellated and motile. That means this male gamete called antherozoid, it is motile. It has two flagella, it is biflagellated. Now how many male gametes are produced? Many male gametes are produced. But when we talk about egg, only one egg is produced and egg is non-motile. So let us try to see the structures of the plant which actually produces the male gamete and the female gamete. So this is how the male and the female sex organs look like in a bryophyte. So that part of the plant which produces gamete is known as gametophyte. So that part of the plant which produces the male gamete or the antherozoid is known as male gametophyte and that part of the plant which produces the female gamete is known as female gametophyte. So here you can see both of them. So this is the antheridiophore. So this is the male and this is the female. So the male sex organ is antheridium and the female sex organ is the archegonium. So this male sex organ or antheridium will produce the male gametes or antherozoid and the female sex organ will produce the female gamete. The female sex organ is known as archegonium. So here you can see this is how archegonium looks like and this is how antheridiophore looks like. So both have a different appearance, right, in their look. So this is the sexual reproductive structure of bryophytes. So these are the place from where the male and female gametes are produced. Now it is not necessary that the male and female gametes both have to be produced from the same plant or from the different plants. So that again depends. So now let us see how exactly the sexual process takes place. As I told previously that water is something which is extremely needed for the survival of a bryophyte. So water is an important thing. Now what is the role that water performs? Water carries the male gametes to the female gamete. As I said the male gametes are motile but the female gamete is not motile. So what water will do? Water through water let us suppose if this is the male gamete, so water will carry the male gamete to the female gamete. Okay, so now once the male gamete reaches the female gamete, what will happen? Fusion will take place. As a result of fusion, zygote will be formed. Now this zygote will grow to form a structure known as sporophyte. 
sporophyte that means phyte is plant sporo is spore that means plant which has spores now these sporophyte will produce spores and then these spores will grow and these spores will grow to form a new plant so new plant is what new plant or a mature plant is nothing but the gametophyte because gametophyte is present in a mature plant and these gametophyte will then give rise to the gametes that is the gametophyte will actually produce the gametes this male gamete and the female gametes again water will carry the male gametes to the female gametes fusion will happen zygote will be formed then zygote will grow to form the sporophyte this will release spores spores will grow to form the gametophyte and the cycle will keep on continuing now when you look at the male and female structure on the plant in the previous slide so or even here you can see this is the female part and this is the male part right so here you can see they look like umbrellas of the plant so the female part as well as the male plant male part they look like umbrellas so how do we give water how do we provide them with water so that the water can carry the male gametes to the female gametes for example if it rains so water will be there and through those water droplets male gametes will be carried to the female gamete so this is the female gamete it doesn't have anything right now but the male gamete if you look at if you take a closer view you actually see the anthridia so the, these are the sperms. Sperms are nothing but the male gametes. So these male gametes will reach the female gamete and this will actually fuse together. So when they fuse, they will form zygote. Right, so here you can see this is one plant. This is again one plant. These are the rhizoids. This is the thallus. And this is the female gametophyte, that means that part of the plant which produces female gametes. This is the male gametophyte, this portion. This part of the plant produces the male gametes. Now fusion happens, after that zygote will be formed. Now this zygote will grow to form an embryo, this is how it has formed. And then this embryo will further grow to form a sporophyte. See this is spo the sporophyte is again like a plant body with spores inside it. See spores are present here. Now this sporophyte will release the spores. So this is a spore. This spore will then start germinating or growing. So when it grows, it develops rhizoids. So rhizoids will fix the spore to the ground and then it will start developing the entire structure. So it will again form a mature plant. So the mature plant will again have the female gametophyte, the male gametophyte and this process will keep on continuing. So now did you observe one thing? In the life cycle of a bryophyte, we introduced two new terms that is gametophyte and sporophyte. So gametophyte is that part which produces gametes and sporophyte is that part which has spores. So we will talk about gametophyte and sporophyte in even more detail. Now before that, let us look at the significance of bryophytes. Why do we need to study bryophytes separately? What role does it play in our environment? It is a source of food for other animals like all bigger animals. These are like small plants. So other animals like birds or any other mammals can eat these plants. Prevent soil erosion as I said because these plants are capable of holding soil by their extensive carpets because they are like you don't see one or two plants like this. You will see over a vast stretch of land you will see so many bryophytes are being grown. So they will actually hold the soil tight together and prevent soil erosion. Helps in rock decomposition. What do we mean by rock decomposition? We would have observed that there are many bryophytes like mosses which actually grow on barren rocks. So barren rocks they are of no use right on rocks you cannot uh, cultivate things. So it is on barren rocks if these bryophytes start growing then they gradually start converting the barren area into dense wood. So decompose rocks means they increase the fertility of the soil which is suitable for growth of higher plants. So initially you had barren rocks. Now when bryophytes started growing up there, it gradually converted that rocky area into dense wood. So now 
you can see that the fertility of the soil increases a lot and as a result more and more other plants can be grown there so it increases the quality of the land it is used as a packing material now there are many mosses which when dried they can act as a very good packing material for glassware for example you would have seen that if you go to a shop to buy crockery items like glass bowls or glass cup dish or whatever you'll see that you they just don't give it to you in a polythene they'll put it inside a box and inside that box also they'll put some uh, some packing material some uh, what do you say some paper like things inside that so that there are no empty spaces because if there are empty spaces the glasses might break while you are taking carrying it but if there are no empty spaces there are no chances of the glasses being the glasses being broken down so those packing material are nothing but dried mosses so one example of a moss which helps or which acts as a very good packing material is sphagnum it is often seen in the packing of bulbs crockery items and etc so these are some of the important uses of bryophytes because of which we are giving special attention to them and we are studying about bryophytes thank you Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.